And of course, the name itself is innocuous because the words Black Lives Matter, well, who's going to disagree with that? Of course, Black Lives Matter. Now, I think that it's not the best way to message it because it should be all lives matter. Because when you say Black Lives Matter, it somewhat implies that other lives don't matter. So, for example, if I were to say white lives matter, people would automatically assume that I was some kind of racist. Or, and, you know, let's be honest, most of the people that use that expression are. Uh, usually when that happens, it's a, a white supremacist or something like that. It should be all lives matter because color doesn't matter. Every human life is valuable. Each human life is made in the image of God. And because of that, we esteem each equally and ought to. Black lives matter somewhat implies that black lives matter and the others do not. And so I don't agree with the messaging, but the words themselves, if you're looking clearly at the denotation, not the connotation, the denotation strictly, the Black Lives Matter, well, nobody's going to disagree with that. That's something that everybody can get on board with. The reason that there is such a disdain from people on the right, like myself, for Black Lives Matter is not only the denotation, but the connotation that comes with it, and also the organization at the national level itself, because Black Lives Matter isn't just a slogan, it is also an organized group of people that have funding, they have a website, they have local chapters. It's like the NRA, for example, another political activist group. It's not about the word itself, because Black Lives Matter was very smart in choosing that name. I don't know if you've ever seen Parks and Rec, but there's one really funny episode where they're dealing with a cult in their town, and the cult refers to themselves as the Rationalist. And one of the characters asked, why do they call themselves the Rationalist? And the answer was, well, they wanted to name themselves that, so if anybody were opposing them or arguing against them, it would seem like they were arguing against something that was rational. And the character there just goes, that's like weirdly brilliant. So it's the same thing that Black Lives Matter does here. They're like, well, nobody could argue with Black Lives Matter. We'll just call ourselves that. Uh, th there are all kinds of organizations on the left, and, and probably the right too, but there are all kinds of organizations on the left that do exactly the same thing. There are groups, for example, called the Students for Democratic, uh, a Democratic America or something like that. They're radical Marxist, but their name would suggest they're just in favor of democracy, which I actually take issue with democracy too, but the vast majority of people don't. And so they know that that's going to be a name that seems as though they're completely rational. Antifa is actually a great example of this. Well, why would we be against someone that is anti-fascist? I'm against fascist too. I guess we're all on the same side. No, you're not. They're radical anarchists, but they are marketing themselves as something that is more agreeable than they actually are. Black Lives Matter does exactly the same thing. Just like the rationalist in Parks and Rec, they're trying to come up with a name that seems as though it would be difficult to argue against or that would make you look like the bad guy if you tried to argue against it. Because the truth is, Black Lives Matter is an anti-Christian, anti-West, radical group of Marxists. And if you don't believe me, Take a look at this graphic real quick. These are things directly from the Black Lives Matter website. We've actually shared these on the show before, but you can read these here. We affirm the lives of black and queer and trans folks, disabled folks, uh, undocumented folks. I, by the way, do find it hilarious. They, can, they constantly use the word folks since that's derived from a German word. But anyway, it uh, seems like it's somewhat in, in contradiction to their message. But anyway, undocumented folks, which, you know, have nothing to do with black lives. Uh, folks with records, women, and all black lives along the gender spectrum. So not just black lives, all black lives across the gender spectrum. Gay black people, trans black people, so on and so forth. Our network centers on those who have... Are, hmm, looks like there's a typo on their website. Anyway, those who have been marginalized within the black liberation movements. And then it goes on, this is a different part of the website... We disrupt the Western-prescribed nuclear family structure requirement by supporting each other as extended families and villages that collectively care for one another, especially our children, to the degree that mothers, parents, and children are comfortable. We foster a queer-affirming network. When we gather, we do so in the intention of freeing ourselves from the tight grip of heteronormative thinking, or rather the belief that uh, all in all the world are heterosexual unless he or she they disclose otherwise. 
Now, what the crap does all that have to do with Black Lives Mattering? Seems to me that they're far more interested in the gay agenda and destroying the nuclear family and, you know, a few other political talking points of the left, like undocumented people, which, generally speaking, not black people. Uh, seems like they're way more concerned with that than they are actually doing anything that helps the black community. And this is what I've been saying from the very beginning. There are people that say Black Lives Matter, that use the hashtag, that even march in the streets with signs. By the way, there were people doing that, and I don't assume any ill intent. Maybe there was, I don't know. But there are people that march with that. Like I said, at the, the Love Matters rally that I went to, there were people, I disagree with them doing that, but, you know, they were peaceful and, and considerate and you didn't have any problems out of them. There are good people that do that, that have no idea that their organization that they're promoting believes that stuff. Because if you were to look at it and you were to look at public opinion, it turns out that black people actually overwhelmingly are more in, in terms of uh, conservative Christendom. Black people tend to be more on that side than even the majority of white people. Black people tend to be more spiritual they tend to be more uh, for what are considered traditional Christian values, so things like a mother and a father being the only form of marriage that's acceptable. And when it comes to the family, most black people are very pro-family. And so all that stuff has nothing to do with the black community, and yet that is the kind of stuff that Black Lives Matter promotes. By the way, you don't have to take my word for it that they're radical Marxists. You can listen to the co-founders of the movement. This is a clip from one of the Black Lives co-founders, Patrice Cullors, who was one of the original people that, that came together with Black Lives Matter and organized the whole thing. This is her words. Um, I also think that it might... Um... I think of a lot of things. The first thing I think is that we actually do have an ideological frame. Um, myself and Alicia in particular are trained organizers. Um, we uh, are trained Marxists. Um, we are uh, super uh, versed um, on sort of ideological theories. And I think that what we really try to do is build a movement that could be utilized by many, many black folk. Now, I want you to notice something there. It wasn't just that she said that we're trained Marxists. She specifically said that we're very, very well versed in the ideology. We're very well versed in, in how to implement that. And we want that to be utilized by black people. They are Marxist and they want to use black people to spread Marxism. That is their plan, according to the co-founder of Black Lives Matter. And by the way, you may notice that she said, me and Alicia... Specifically, the Alicia that she's mentioning is Alicia Garza, another co-founder of Black Lives Matter, who she is also asserting in that clip is a very well-trained Marxist that wants to use that and implement that in America and use black people to spread that and to do so. These people have been pretending to be something that they are not and have gotten wide support. I mean, uh, if you're looking at public opinion polls, the, the most recent one, and this shocked me, is that Black Lives Matter has an approval rating of over 60%. So if there were an election here held today and, and Black Lives Matter was on the ticket for president, that means that Black Lives Matter would be the president of the United States by a landslide. It wouldn't even be closed. They, they'd close down the, uh, they would close down all the media predictions at like 9 p.m. because it was so clear who was going to win. And so this is where we're standing right now. Black people are being used as pawns and being duped by this organization to bring in a whole bunch of political stuff that they themselves do not agree with. That demographically as a whole, they tend to not agree with. And this is what's going on here. And another thing, they basically become nothing but a mere fundraiser and a branch of the DNC. And again, you don't have to take my word for it. This is a clip from a researcher who works at The Blaze. His name's Jason Buttrell, and you can see some of the research that he has here. 
So uh, he did some digging to find out where all the donations that are currently being given to Black Lives Matter, and, and man, have they been doing an awful lot of fundraising here lately in the past few weeks. And uh, this is what he came up with. When you click to donate to Black Lives Matter, it takes you to Act Blue. If donated, money goes unclaimed. Act Blue disperses that money however they want. These are their top expenditures so far in 2020. And for those of you that are listening on audio only, that list goes Bernie 2020 at about $186 million in donations. After that, Biden for president. After that, Elizabeth Warren's presidential campaign. After that, Pete Buttigieg's campaign. After that, Democratic congressional campaign, which is sort of a conglomerate of all the Democrat uh, congressional campaigns. It just sort of delves it out to people that they think it can be most used for. Uh, Amy for America. I assume that's Amy Klobuchar. Friends for Andrew Yang. Again, another Democrat candidate. Democrat senator, uh, senatorial campaign. Um, again, same thing as, as earlier, uh, just for the Senate instead of the House. And then Democratic National Committee. So literally about $30 million gone directly to the DNC. And then Amy Gathright for Senate. Or sorry, Amy Gar- uh, McGarth for Senate. Yeah. So you can see there, those are their top expenditures. That's where the money that you are donating to Black Lives Matter actually goes. They are a political activist group pretending to be a, a group that's supposed to care about Black Lives Matter. Now, I want you to also consider this. When it comes to groups like, for example, one that I'm a member of, the NRA, they do give money to politicians that they believe are going to enact their policies, and that's fine. The thing is, the members, as a general rule, they all know that. I would be willing to bet that the vast majority of people in Black Lives Matter or that use the hashtag on Twitter or that donate to Black Lives Matter and tell other people to donate, I would, I would bet my right arm that the vast majority of them have no idea that, the, that a big chunk of that money is actually going to Democrats to get them elected. I mean, they probably think it's going to like urban schools or something, but it's not. At least a big chunk of it is not. And we actually found out recently that a very, very large percentage of the donations are going to travel expenses and speaking arrangements for people in Black Lives Matter as well. And so they're actually cashing in on the movement on top of that and and making themselves rich. So now they have this fancy new technology where you click on one of these boxes and it takes you to another one of my videos. Hopefully it works a lot better than the Obamacare website or the DNC's Iowa caucus app. Gotta love that big government central planning.